slim the jaw, pop the cheeks, you have a more balanced face where the weight is evenly distributed. Little did I know, I was not only getting a chin today, but I was getting my lips filled and my temples filled. No, because why was no one going to tell me that getting a facial balancing consultation is so humbling? They were like, oh yeah, your chin's kind of short in comparison to the rest of your face. I was like, in the comments, she said that her quote for all of this to be balanced was $1,100 without including the optional under eye filler. Hey guys, it's Briar of Briar Chats and this is a safe space for yappers. In the past 10 years especially, we have really been made to believe that our faces need to be perfect, our faces need to be symmetrical, it has to be balanced, like your nose has to match, your lips has to match your eyes, like we have been conditioned into believing that if your face doesn't match this perfect balance of like a Victoria's Secret model's features, you need to fix it and don't worry because you can. And that's why I kind of just wanted to make a video and yap with you guys about why I kind of feel like the cosmetic industry wants us to feel asymmetrical and ugly. They want us to feel like our faces need to be fixed. So if you guys just want to yap about filler, about how the cosmetic industry has made us feel about our asymmetrical faces, why is my face not the same on both sides? And just react to some silly old TikToks. Yeah, stick around because we're going to get into it. Obviously, two big disclaimers. Not all cosmetologists, injectors, whatever, whatever, whatever. However, I think there are a couple of trends that we will get into in this video that encourage a lot of the cosmetology and cosmetics industry to treat us like we're ugly, to treat us like if our face isn't balanced and matched, it's not good enough. And equally, obviously, this is all just my opinion. Silly, goofy, girly pop. Okay, okay, cool. So I really wanted to start with the video that really inspired it. Like it, it made the two last brain cells that I have spark together and have this idea to make this video. I really just wanted to start with that video because I feel like this video epitomizes this trend, this fact that we have to have this perfect balanced face. You can't just go in wanting one thing. You can't just go in with one insecurity because you're going to leave with 10 and you're going to have them all fixed. Today is a big day, guys. I am getting a chin. Looking at me from the front, you can't tell that I don't have a chin, but from the side, it is quite obvious. My side profile has always been my biggest insecurity, so I'm excited to see what I'm gonna look like after today. <laughs> so I go to the Couture Med Spa in Lake Mary, and little did I know, I was not only getting a chin today, but I was getting my lips filled and my temples filled. I've never heard yeah, of temple filler, but I'm excited to give it a try. My best friend was there with me recording, yeah, and she it. literally could not look at this. I mean, it does look painful, but it wasn't. Okay, now it's time to get a chin. Again, this one did not hurt at all. I always expect this stuff to hurt a lot, but it never does. Not gonna lie though, lips do hurt a little bit that's why they put the numbing cream on there but i just suck it up it's fine hey, are you guys ready to see my face don't laugh but this is the next morning i'm very swollen i'm gonna put on some makeup and show you guys what i look like so obviously the swelling will go down but who knew having a chin would change my life here's the before picture and here's the after now that i'm done with my filler i think i'm gonna get a membership and start removing some of the sun damage on my skin i don't know see you guys next time i hope that demonstrates exactly what we're gonna talk about and look into in this video because i feel like this story is all too common people go in having one insecurity and then they are then told by professionals that no for your face to actually look good for you to be balanced because your face has to be balanced to be good i again with the air bunnies but a lot of the comments are reflecting what i feel like there's a comment that says this makes me sad your natural face is so drop dead gorgeous i'm confused i remember where she used to post old normie pics of herself versus her old self saying she's so much happier now that she doesn't care what people think of her looks i don't get it we love you no you're perfect no like a lot of people I mean, again, don't tell people what to do with their faces. If she wanted to do it, that's fine. But I do feel like when you are especially an influencer, there is a lot of pressure to get filler. And then you go in and then you find out, oh, it's not just your chin that's the problem. It's your lips. It's your temples. Sorry. Sorry, babes. Let me hold your hands while I say this. Your temples are so yuck. I don't even know how your temples can look bad temple check do my temples look okay sound off in the comments but 
This reminded me actually of two other stories. The first being a bit of an older story, which is the Gabby Hanna story. And I feel like this is a really good story because Gabby admits that she was very insecure. And I just wanted to refresh or show you if you did not see the story time that she made talking about the journey that she went through getting all of the filler that she did. I want to go get the little crook in my nose straightened out. But when I got there, they wanted to put filler in the tip of my nose. And I said, I really don't want to do that. I want to remain myself. I'm Middle Eastern. I don't want to hide my ethnicity. I want to be myself. And he said, well, the tip of your nose is really droopy. So I think you'd be a lot happier if you lifted the tip. And it's like, well, when you put it like that. <laughs> and the doctor assured me it's reversible. It's not permanent. If you don't like it, you can just come in and dissolve it. And it'll be like it never happened. So I figured, all right, well, since it's reversible and free, because this is a little secret about the industry that a lot of people don't really talk about is a lot of influencers are getting it for free so that they'll post about it. So I get it in my tip and immediately I was like, I love this. I feel so much more secure in front of a camera. I'm not as uncomfortable smiling. It looks so much better. And I asked everybody else what they thought and nobody else noticed. They were just like, what did you do? And I was like, oh, I put like filler in the tip. And they're like, huh? Nobody else really noticed. <laughs> Funny how that happens. So here's the thing with filler. It dissolves and it moves. So one time I had just gotten this filler done and I was making out with this guy. And all of a sudden I hear this loud sound. That wasn't good enough. I hear a loud crack and pop at the tip of my nose. And I shouted because it hurt. And then the next morning when I looked in the mirror, I noticed, I wish I still had a picture of this. We're in luck. I had this like bulb sitting at the tip of my nose. Like the filler had migrated from where it was and was just sitting at the very tip. So I called the doctor and I'm like, dude, the, the filler must have had some type of air bubble in it or something and it popped and it shifted and he was like that's impossible and i'm like well what is it then so then i had to dissolve the entire thing and if i was smart i would have just let it go with that like okay this is obviously a bad idea let's just let this go but i get it all dissolved and when i get it dissolved i was so uncomfortable not having it done because of looking in the mirror and seeing a straighter more lifted nose that of course i had to get it done again so i went back and i get it done and just accept like oh this is a part of my life now i'm just going to be getting filler in the nose for the rest of my life and that's okay so i switched to somebody else and when i went to that person they said you should really get your chin done and i was like what no i don't want to get my, my chin done you know it's cute and she said well your chin is recessed and i'm like well when you put it like that and it's reversible and it's free. So I said, okay, load her up. So then when I go back for touch-ups for my nose and my chin, it's you should really get your smile lines done. And I'm like, what? That's how I smile. That's just my face. And they said, yeah, but like, don't you see how it like makes you look older? How there's these big lines down the center of your face? And I'm like, oh, well, when you put it like that, plus it's reversible and it's free. So then I get my smile lines filled. So when I came back to get my nose and my chin and my smile lines touched up, they told me you should really get some filler in your jaw. And I was like, filler in my jaw? No, I don't want a big jaw. What's wrong with my jaw? And they said, well, your face is really asymmetrical. Do you see how this side is so much less structured than this side? It would really make you look a lot thinner and younger. And I said, oh, well, <laughs> when you put it like that, plus it's reversible and it's free. So I go back and I'm getting my nose and my chin and my smile line and my jaw touched up. And then they said, you should really get your lips done. And I said, no, absolutely not. This is my hard line. Everybody in LA has their lips done. I'm totally okay with my lips. I think they look really cute on my face. And they said, no, 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 no. You're not going to look like, you know, one of these LA girls with the filler. We can do it really subtle but don't you see how this side of your mouth is so much longer and thinner and how this side hangs lower we can really just make it look more symmetrical so you don't look so lopsided and i said well when you say it like that so then i go to get my nose and my chin and my smile line and my jaw line and my lips touched up and they tell me have you ever had botox and i said no i don't want botox i don't want my face to freeze and they said no no no, no, no it won't freeze go ahead and lift your eyebrows for me so i said and they said oh yeah you're gonna love Botox. They said it's temporary and it's free. So then I go back and I get touch-ups for my nose and my, chin, and my smile and my lines, lines and my, and my Botox. And they said, you should really get your under eyes done. And I'm like, what? What do you mean? Why would I get my under eyes done? Why would I want my under eyes to look puffy? And they said, well, because your under eyes are really sunken and it makes you look really tired. And I was like, oh, <laughs> when you put it like that. Yeah, I really hope that demonstrates the escalation and the way that these injectors and professionals are told to look at your face. Like they are told to look at your face and find anything asymmetrical, anything droopy, anything that makes you look old, anything that makes you show expression, even things that she, and whilst yes, she was a fully grown adult, she made those choices. It's in a situation where you're not the professional and a professional is telling you, hey, objectively, your face looks bad because it's wonky. <laughs> Fix it. And we'll do it for free because you're an influencer. And again, what I feel like this just shows is that you may go in and f have one insecurity and you'll leave with 10. What are you supposed to say? Because someone is objectively telling you that you will look better because you will be symmetrical and balanced. And it's just like so sad to me because she, as she said, she liked all of those features 
and then you're being told by a professional that they're not good enough, that they're bad, that they're asymmetrical, that they make you look old. Gosh forbid we look old. Even just gosh forbid we look our age. Now I have one more example to show you guys because I feel like once, it's just like it's once again proving that it feels almost impossible to just go in for one procedure and that be enough and not being told, hey, bestie, pal, did you know you actually, there's a lot wrong here. And that is a vlog that Susie J. Todd posted. Now, I love Susie J. Todd. I feel like she's very honest and has a really great relationship with her audience. And I really appreciate the honesty that she had going into this transformation glow up that she felt like she needed and how she regretted getting way more stuff done than she wanted to. So let's watch that now, shall we? It has been so long since I've done a glow up and I'm feeling crusty. I would just like to do some things to treat myself, to make me feel like the hottie that I am. So in this video, we are going to be glowing up for vacation because in a week I'm going to Ellie Beach for a beach wedding. I have a massive list of things that we're going to be getting done. This is probably going to be the most expensive glow up I've ever done. We're going to be doing lip filler. I know. I'm literally getting lip filler today and I feel like I'm crazy and I shouldn't have booked it in, but also I've wanted it for a long time. <laughs> Nails, pedicure, obviously. I'm gonna be getting my bangs recut, spray tan, lash extensions, brow lamination, tooth gem. I'm going all out. Obviously you do not need to do any of these things to glow up. You're already beautiful the way you are, but sometimes it just feels good to treat yourself. First thing we're doing is my lip filler appointment. Disclaimer, I am in no way encouraging anybody to get Botox or lip filler. I do not think that you need that to look beautiful. A lot of people lie about getting work done, so I only put this in to be completely transparent with you guys. There was nothing wrong with my lips before. Just because I've gotten this done does not mean I don't stand by my values anymore. I think you are just the way you are. You do not need to do any of this stuff to glow up. You are already perfect. Please do not go thinking you need to do this stuff just because I did it. There's a lot of risks involved and I'm not a perfect person. Maybe a small part of it was me falling victim to society standards. Whatever the reason, it was a decision I made and I wanted to be honest with you guys about it. I'm absolutely crapping myself because I hate needles. We're bringing the doctor, guys. <laughs> I didn't know you had to do this. I have Susanna here. Hi. Okay, thank you. Thanks, John. Yeah. I'm really yeah. excited. Yeah. You're pranking me right now. Yeah. We're taking the piercing out, guys. I can't tell the goddamn thing. It was worse than I thought and then it was better than I thought. <laughs> I'm such a pouty queen. In a spur of the moment decision, I decided to get forehead Botox, which I regret getting done because I didn't need it and I can't make facial expressions like I used to. It'll wear off eventually. I'm a teeth clencher, so I also got massive Botox to help with my jaw pain. Done. My face is sore. Ow. <laughs> I love how I was just getting lip filler done and then suddenly I got my entire face injected. <laughs> it hurts to laugh. And I honestly feel like that is maybe a more realistic example of what can happen because you're already in the chair, you're in the hype, maybe you're getting Botox for your jaw. Like it's the, it's the classic joke, right? People get Botox for their teeth clenching and then they're like, oh, just maybe slip up and get the, get the brow, get the, what is this called? The frownies or the the raisy eyebrowies. Because it was spur of the moment and you felt maybe pressure, not even maybe from this specific injector, like it seems like she really liked her, there was just that overall pressure to do more. You got me wanting more, more, more. And then you end up doing things you regret because that's not what you went in for, but it's just this escalation. It's all of a sudden like, oh, the lips and jaw isn't enough because I don't wanna have big lips and a skinny jaw and I won't be clenching my teeth, I also need to have a smooth brow. Now I wanted to get into the second part of this video and why I feel like this is the case, why I feel like this industry is being pushed into treating us like we're ugly, treating us like we're asymmetrical, and therefore telling us that it's not just one thing you need to fix, but to balance out your face, you need to do it all, babes. You need 40 units of something. I don't know. And that is the trend of face balancing because no longer are we just getting big lips because that would look silly, obviously. You need big lips, raised eyebrows, skinny jaw, pointy chin, pointy nose. It needs to be balanced and it, everyone, in fact, needs to all look the same because that's the only right way to look apparently. And I truly think that this face balancing trend is what is causing this and is what is pushing this industry to treat us this way because that's what they're being told. They're being told to look at your face in this way. They're being told to see your imperfections as a problem, to see your asymmetry as something they need to be fixed. They are being taught that it's not enough to just fill your lips if you also have a small chin. They're being told that they need to fix your whole face and make it balanced. So let's get into some TikToks showing this point. The 
premise behind facial weight is when you immediately glance at someone, where does your eyes and attention go to? If we take a look at Bella Hadid, where is all the weight drawing to? Her chin and jaw. Slim the jaw, pop the cheeks. You have a more balanced face where the weight is evenly distributed. If we take a look at this patient, where is all the weight being drawn to? I would say the weight is focused more on the jaw area. By elongating the face with a pop in the chin and the cheeks, the facial weight is more evenly distributed. And where is the facial weight when you briefly glance at this photo? Her eyes, cheeks, and nose. Support the jawline, pop the chin and the lips, and the weight is evenly distributed. At a brief glance, we see that the facial weight is more focused on the nose, the cheeks, and the eyes. Support the chin, and the weight is evenly distributed. Those before and afters were not from that, um, that girl talking in the second video. I just kind of wanted to show you how it looked in the before and after and then also her explaining it and i feel like well yes in theory there is nothing wrong with the idea of face balancing i feel like unfortunately it has really taken over the industry and led people to feel like if your face is like if you have a broad jaw if you have a big nose if you have small lips like instead of learning to love that about yourself you need to fix it and make it match the rest of your face. Instead of having a little tiny chin, no, you need to be handsome Squidward. It's so bizarre to me that in the year of 2024 and with everything that we now know about filler and it's not as temporary as we once thought, that instead of being told that you're beautiful because you don't look like everyone else, you're being told, no, you can only be beautiful if you look like everyone else and you have to balance out your face right now because otherwise you look ridiculous. And I'm talking about me too, because my face is clearly not balanced. But yes, I did have a couple more TikToks that I wanted to show you guys, so let's get into those. No, because why was no one going to tell me that getting a facial balancing consultation is so humbling? They were like, oh yeah, your chin's kind of short in comparison to the rest of your face. I was like, okay. Do I need chin filler? Um, and then they also said that, oh yeah, this, you could use some tightening here. I'm like, well, I knew that, but you didn't have to say it. I wanted to show you guys this video because I feel like it's the very honest reality of what face balancing is. It's not someone looking at your face and helping you to feel the most confident. No, it's telling you that everything about you naturally is not good enough. And in the comments, she said that her quote for all of this to be balanced was $1,100 without including the optional under eye filler. So I'm sure that it would have been more like $1,200 to $1,500 if she also got the under eye filler, which as we have heard, can go crazy, crazy wrong. Like, gosh forbid your under eyes be a little sunken in. Like, it's just insane to me that we now spend so much money for the pleasure of being told everything wrong with your face. And don't you worry for the, the easy, simple, repeatable price of $1,100 you can make it all better. But yes, let's just watch one more TikTok and then we can wrap up with our final thoughts. This is why I would say no if she asked for only lip filler. This client initially came in because she was wanting a little bit of fullness to her lip, but was also concerned with how she photographed from the side profile. These are all things I definitely consider when moving forward with a lip filler client. I take a look at you from every single angle. After an in-depth assessment and consultation, we actually discussed how her chin sat slightly right behind her lips. This actually, from her side profile, causes a more blunted appearance and shortens her lower face. If I added filler to her lips without addressing the chin, it would create more of an imbalance and that would project her lips too far out and it's just not the vibe. So to combat her concerns, this was the plan. Our plan was to use some dermal filler to create a little bit of elongation to her chin, feminize the point slightly, and soften the shadows that happen right here underneath her lips. Now this is exactly why full facial balancing and a global assessment is extremely important. Look at how much more fine-tuned her chin looks in the after to support the lips. It's beautiful. And then of course that side profile looks stunning. That slight elongation flattered her face shape beautifully. Also less shadowing. Look how beautiful that is. It's like almost an airbrush effect. Now the thing that hurts me the most about that video is I don't think there's any malice behind it. She believes she's doing a good job and the right thing because this is what they are being trained in this industry to do. They are being trained that you like gosh forbid you have a small chin. Oh my gosh. If you have a small chin you're not feminine. Like the femininizing what was the word? Feminine feminine nom nom. No. Feminine nom nom. 
feminizing her face. What? And this is what I mean when it's like this person is not even really coming from a bad place, but they are literally trained to look at your face that if you have a small chin, needs to be fixed. Like you can't just get lip filler, you have to change your whole face to look a very specific and certain way of beautiful instead of just thinking that who you are is beautiful. And I know it sounds so stupid and preachy, but like it's so sad to me that instead of giving ourselves the time and the space to like ourselves, to like how we look, to be happy with how we look, to not want to look like everyone else and feel and criticize your face for it being out of proportion and not balanced. Like it, that is really sad to me. That really hurts me. I just think of my younger self and all I thought I needed when I was younger was a lip filler and a boob job. Why? Because then my body would be balanced. I remember everyone saying that. They're like, you need your boobs to match your hips. And I was like, oh my gosh, yes, that makes so much sense. And again, with my lips, I was like, I have small lips and like a pointier, bigger chin. So I need big lips and then I will be balanced. Like, but luckily, and instead at that time, I didn't have the money for a boob job or lip filler. And instead I was a given the time to just like myself, to be happy with myself, to be confident with myself. And that's not because I think I'm the most beautiful, symmetrical, amazing person in the world, but it's because I stopped looking at my face and body like it needed to be fixed. I started exercising in a way where it was does this exercise or activity make me feel good? Does going for a walk in nature make me feel good? Yes, I wanna do that. Does walking my dogs make me feel good and happy? Yes, I wanna do that. Instead of constantly criticizing and pulling yourself down and thinking that when you look perfectly balanced, this, that, or the other, you'll feel different about yourself. You'll feel confident about yourself. Because I feel like that's the biggest fallacy of all is that people think that once they fix these couple of things, people think that once they have made their lips and chin bigger or more balanced to their face, they'll be happy. But it's not because those injections, those fillers, they aren't also filled with self-confidence. No, they're filled with hyaluronic acid that probably isn't gonna get metabolized by your body properly and is gonna be there until at least 2034. And what's even more likely is that because you're going to these places where they are told to criticize and critique your face and try and make it more balanced, you're probably gonna leave with more insecurities than you came in. You're probably gonna think you have more problems to fix than when you started. And you're probably just going to get further away from loving and accepting and feeling confident in who you are. And look, all of this is not to say that I think that all filler is bad or I think any type of Botox is bad. At the end of the day, I want people to be happy. I want people to feel good about themselves. And I don't think there's something inherently wrong with wanting filler or Botox, but I do just worry that you're going to go into an environment where they're going to leave with more insecurities than they came in. And they're gonna feel like they have more things to fix than when they came in. And that's really my only worry about this. If you're happy getting filler and you're happy knowing that you know you may have to get it all dissolved again later because it won't get metabolized and you're happy to make these decisions, that is absolutely fine. And I want people to feel confident and informed in the decisions that they make. But the thing that I guess I really worry about is that currently the environment that you're often walking into is one where you're going to be told you have more things wrong than you thought you did. And this is also not me saying I'm never going to get Botox or filler because who knows, you know, they might find something better. They might find something that your body actually can metabolize. I don't think that being critical of the industry and being critical of how they are treating people means that you don't agree with Botox at all. You don't agree with filler at all. I think it's actually a better stance to have is to be critical and to be informed in the decisions that you make. But anyway, I feel like I got really tangenty and yappy at the end, so apologies, but I would really love to know what you guys think in the comments down below. So please let me know. You guys always have like the best 
thoughts and opinions always so let me know in the comments down below but yes thank you guys so much for watching if you stay till the end you are a real one don't forget to like comment and subscribe, subscribe yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. and if you want to keep up with me between my uploads youtube should be recommending another one of my videos right now and i also have a tiktok and an instagram and i will link my vlog channel down below but don't you worry guys because i'm not funny there either bye Oh, <laughs>